the Heisman Trophy. So let's go into Urban's playbook to see what made Joe Burrow a breakout star. And coach, as you were telling us earlier, it happened before he was a star at all. Yeah, he came from a small town, Athens, Ohio. His father was the defense coordinator for Frank Solich for many, many years, a Nebraska grad. So he grew up in the game of football. However, he wasn't even in, in the top 350 as far as the recruiting rankings, wow. which tells you a little bit about the recruiting <laughs> rankings. But the one thing Joe Burrow was, he was a competitor. How do you know that? He was a multi-sport athlete, which I'm a big fan yep. of. He was a great basketball player. Yep. Matter of fact, he was All-State. And I really believe, and I know you guys believe the same. I have my, same with my son. You need to play all sports. You yep. need to go play. I think everybody should play basketball. Everybody has to learn to play defense and fight, compete, yep. instead of the so-called spandex quarterback. The spandex quarterback's this big, and he has those specialty coaches. He never learns to compete. I know you competed. I competed all sports, all times. Baseball, basketball, football, all growing up. But for me, when I really developed that competitive fire, that leadership ability, it was pitching. It was on the mound. 10, 11, 12 years old. I played in a Bronco World Series a couple years in a row against teams all over the world. And I had the fire. Like, I got it right now. There you and, go. And I developed that. Goosebumps. And listen, <laughs> that translated when you're in the huddle as a quarterback in you the bet. leadership. Okay, so now you get this kid who, he's the 10-year-old pitcher, but now he's got the heart of a lion. But he's an underdeveloped quarterback. Take us through some things, maybe three things, that you would use to develop him as a passer. Sure, so Joe shows up on the Ohio State campus. You have Braxton Miller, Big Ten Player of the Year. You have Cardell Jones, national champion, and you have JT Barrett, two times Big Ten Player of the yep. Year. He comes in the room. And the three things we always look at for a quarterback, he was somewhat underdeveloped. Number one was, and the most important, is a quick release. Right. Number two is arm strength. Number three is accuracy. And so I saw Dan Mullen. This is very similar to the development of Alex Smith. And I'd like to take you guys through a quick release. So be the quarterback for me, Matt. Obviously, you got a receiver, so you're going to throw from the left, right? right? Yep. You are yep. a lefty. All right. You've had and a so couple the, lefty quarterbacks. I was going to say, he's had day. some success with the left. The first time I've seen this happen is when I had Alec, uh, Alex Smith at Utah. And I saw Dan Mullen. He was also very slow. So the idea being here, before you can worry about arm strength or accuracy, because you can have a strong arm, if you don't get ball out fast, the higher levels you get in football, it doesn't matter. That's right. This is where you start. And so we just shotgun snap as fast as you can. Don't worry about getting the laces. Just get the ball out. This teaches you to shorten your release and execute. Sometimes the arm slot changes. Yep. Get the ball out fast. So here we go. Set and go. Fast. Just turn and get the ball out. Get the ball out and get the ball out. That's I'm number fat. one. Very good. Nice hands. Oh, I was good. I was a bit nervous about that, actually. <laughs> I was... So the most important part of a young quarterback being developed is a fast release. Yeah. If they don't have it, people say you can't develop. That's nonsense. You can develop it. That might be look like a simple uh, drill. Right. Joe, to this day, said that was one of the best drills he's ever done. Still doing it right now. Still doing it. Number two is arm strength. And you hear so many of the quarterback gurus talk about weighted balls, which we use weight weighted balls. Sure. But the most important thing about you go through your weight training, you eat right, your body grows up like Joe's did. However, a lot like baseball, you want to strengthen your arm. It sounds simple. Throw the ball hard. Sure. Yeah. His first two years at Ohio State, in spring practice, many times I'd say, Joe, listen, I don't care if you complete a ball today. Go through 7-on-7, seven 0-for-20. Seven, oh I don't care. You throw that ball right through the receiver as hard as you can. Throw him. Throw him, even if you overstride, because you need to develop arm yeah, strength. Yeah, yeah. And so that was number one is going to be release point. Number two is going to be arm strength. And then the third part, once you get the top two, is accuracy. accuracy. That's where you have to give credit to LSU. Yep. They've done a wonderful job developing accuracy to the point. How about this? He could go down as the most <laughs> highest completion percentage in the history it's of college football. It's, it's incredible. But even once you develop those skills, you got the heart of a line. You develop the skills. You still got to go do it in the offense on the field. Let's look at what LSU is doing on the field conceptually that allows Joe Burrow to have success. In 2005, I was down there with Dan Mullen at University of Florida. Bill Belichick comes in. And I was, the term that I love to say, our staff used to always say, when do you know your quarterback's game ready? When do you know your team's game ready? That means, when do you know it's ready to go right. play? Yeah, yeah. And he would always say to me, and I, put, I had it up on the board everywhere I coached after he was, after 2005, your team is ready, your player's ready, when they not only know the what, but the why they're doing it. Yep. And that means it's concept teaching, not assignment teaching. The poor coaches, how about this? I've seen many really good quarterbacks that don't play very well. Well, why? they don't have good concepts. They don't have good they concepts. They don't understand why they're doing things. So this is what LSU is doing now. They got a concept here, Coach, you love. It's called levels. Take us through it. Yeah, this is levels. This is actually Joe's favorite play, the number one play in the pass offense. They can play action it or drop back. In levels, you're going to see that there's a concept. The number one concept is the first receiver or number one guy in the progression is going to be the X. 
There's going to be a second level player coming over about 10, 12 to 15 yards, then the third player in the flat. The movement key for the quarterback is going to be the deep defender. The rules are deep defender, flat defender. As you can see here, the deep defender or the quarter safety settles his feet. Joe takes a shot over the top. Yeah, it's just two things, Coach. You talk about he's on time, first of all. The ball gets out on time. The minute he sees that movement key, the safety kind of gets stuck in his feet. The ball's out. And then the 52-yard laser, that speaks to the arm strength that he has. All right, what, what else are they doing? Because that's a great concept. Do they can continue to use that concept? Yeah, this is another look against Florida. Same exact play. And as you mentioned, Joel, the thing that LSU does great, they run the same concept out of multitude formation. There you go. So this goes back to the... Not just the what, the why. Now you can see deep defender, the free safety, they're playing very deep. Now he's going to take his eyes off the deep or the number one progression, the X. Now he's going to find the flat defender. If the flat defender sucks up like he does here, he's going to hit the second level right over the top. Once again, this is a concept play. This is not assignment play. That's when you know, and I, I always go back to when you want to criticize a quarterback, I don't criticize quarterbacks. I say, what are they being taught? There you go. And Bill Belichick said it best. When are they ready? When are you as a player ready? When you not just know what, but why am I right. doing it? And you understand the whole concept. And when the offense understands that, then you can run it out of multiple sets. You saw right there, different personnel groups, different formations, and yet LSU can execute because it's the same concept. It's simple for the offense, complicated for the defense. So that's how he's doing it on the field this year. Just think about this. You take one of the under-recruited players in, in college football four years ago. Think about 350. You teach him, he's got the heart of a lion, he's a multi-sport athlete. Then he comes to us, he's got slow release, he's got not great arm strength, he works his tail off with those great drills. Then he goes to an excellent offense like LSU, gets coached, his accuracy picks up to the point where he could finish a number one draft pick, and how about this, the most highest completed completion, completion percentage in college football history. That's incredible. He's had an amazing year. It's, it's by the way, coaches out there at the youth level, dads out there, put your kids in multiple sports. Please. He's going to serve them well down the stretch in their future. This bowl is always a good time. This bowl always lights up the night. It all comes down to this. And this year won't be any different. Keaton Slovis, the freshman phenom, has the Trojans moving in the right direction. But after a season of what ifs, Iowa's out for redemption as they look for their third bowl win in a row. Touchdown, Iowa! The San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl. Friday at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here. College football on Fox.